Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's economic update on uh, response to COVID-19 in the Yukon. We are uh, joined today by Minister of Economic Development, Ranj Pillay, and Minister of Highways and Public Works, Richard Mostyn. After uh, opening remarks from each of the ministers, we'll go to a round of questions with the reporters that are on the line. Uh, we also, for the hearing impaired today, have an ASL interpreter, Mary Thiessen. Uh, she will be signing the uh, speeches and questions and answers for uh, the ministers today. Thank you for joining us, Mary, and thank you for everyone for tuning in uh, online and on the radio. Uh, without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Economic Development Minister Ranj Pillay. Thank you, Matthew, and thank you, Mary. Good afternoon. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Kuala Lumpur First Nation and the Tan Kwachin Council. I'd like to take the opportunity today to give an update on the economic supports our government has been providing to Yukoners. We are continuing to work to keep Yukoners healthy and safe during this pandemic and deliver timely, effective economic supports. The Department of Economic Development continues to meet with stakeholders, assess the state of local businesses, and develop initiatives to support Yukon's business community. To date, the Department has established the Business Advisory Council to monitor the economic impacts of COVID-19 and provide advice to the Department of Economic Development. Introduced the paid sick leave rebate to allow Yukon workers without sick leave to stay at home um, if they are sick or required to self-isolate. Changed the Yukon nominee program criteria to address concerns around nominee status for those nominees who may experience layoff or reduced hours. And introduced the temporary support for events funding program to help businesses recover irretrievable costs from the cancellation of major events due to COVID-19. And established the economic impact tracking mechanisms with the Department of Tourism and Culture and uh, led by Minister Dendy's um, and industry organizations, including surveys and bi weekly industry calls. Um, of course, we've also um, created the Yukon Business Relief Program. This program is being delivered alongside CANNOR to reduce the administration burden um, for Yukon businesses and allow a one application approach for both programs. So since the announcement um, of our first program less than eight weeks ago, we've received um, about 300, approximately 360 um, applications um, and processed and approved over $2.8 million in funding from our programs. This includes 104 applications to the sick leave program for a total grant of 166,732, as well as 40 applications uh, to the canceled events program, totaling $655,468. Um, the, um, the program with the highest uptake to date is the Yukon Business Relief Program with 223 applications and over $1.9 million in approval to date. The Yukon Business Relief Program is for Yukon businesses that have experienced at least a 30% reduction in revenue as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the program covers specific fixed, fixed costs in order to provide immediate relief to businesses. And this program has and will continue to provide urgently needed help under these changing operating conditions. So I encourage businesses to apply for support for their eligible um, fixed costs. Um, each eligible business will receive support uh, for up to 100% of their fixed costs to a maximum of $30,000 per month. And information and the application form can be found at yukon.ca and our staff are standing uh, by ready to assist you. We recognize the positive impacts um, this program is making, which is why today we are announcing that we are extending this support program for Yukon businesses. We have extended the Yukon Business Relief Program an additional two months till July 23rd to provide further ongoing support for our economy. This extension will allow us will also allow us to continue our collaborative work with the Canadian Northern Economic Development Agency Business Relief Fund 
The department and the agency have been working closely together, as I've touched on, through a single application process to ensure that Yukoners are able to receive the most support available during this time, and the extension will further facilitate that goal. And I'd like to thank both teams for working together um, as well as they have on this, um, on this project. We've heard from the business community about the challenges being faced by businesses to address fixed costs and the continuation of this program will provide much needed help under these challenging operating conditions. The grant program is intended to help Yukon businesses stay afloat as measures to slow the spread of COVID-19 impact their ability to generate revenue. Uh, we've heard from the Business Advisory Council and the Tourism Advisory Board that direct help for fixed cost is what businesses needed. And their recommendations inform the Yukon Business Relief Program and their ongoing advice, uh, which we get on a weekly basis, continues to help us address the impact, the economic impact of COVID, the COVID-19 impact. We will get through this together and rebuild a robust Yukon economy that supports healthy, vibrant communities. We are working proactively to keep Yukoners healthy and safe during this pandemic and align our economic support efforts where needed. As economic programs and supports are available, we will continue to uh, put information on yukon.ca and our staff are standing by and ready to assist. I wish to commend Yukoners for listening to the recommendations of the Chief Medical Officer of Health. The path to success is battling COVID-19 is in following the advice of the Chief Medical Officer uh, of Health's six steps physical distancing, regular hand washing, staying home when sick, not gathering in groups of more than 10, limiting travel to communities and self-isolating when required. Our resiliency as Yukoners is our strength. And I know I've said this uh, before, but it bears repeating um, again, Yukon businesses need your support. So I, you know, we're hearing um, many reports back from our private sector um, and some businesses are seeing great, great support and, and um, please continue that and to, and to spread your um, support around our community. And um, you know, more than ever at this point, we have to buy local. It is so important for us to support our private sector. We're in incredibly lucky to have so many great options in our territory from meals to clothes to lessons and everything in between. Yukon businesses have so many great things to offer. Small businesses are the heart of our community and the backbone of our economy. It's local, it's our local businesses that support our sports leagues and our festivals, and we need to give them the support they need now. Um, also, I think it's important as it, we go through those six uh, points, that individuals also um, take into consideration the respect for people working as essential workers. Myself and Minister Mostyn have um, been conducting calls with, um, as well with labor leaders, and um, we've heard it over and over again that um, a lot of people, and I, and I take an opportunity every time I'm in a retail operation to have a discussion with the people that are working there on the floor and, and asking them, and you know, many Yukoners are being uh, extremely respectful. Um, but there, there are others that are not respecting those individuals and they're getting in their space and they're not um, respecting um, the social distancing. And those are all the things where, please, um, all the people that are out there doing the good work that they are to support our sector and work for our private sector, um, please um, be respectful to them. And, and if they're in a position where they have to uh, identify some protocols, um, be respectful. Um, they're just passing on um, messages um, on behalf of, um, of their employers and owners, and they're just trying to keep um, you and um, themselves safe. So it's also um, that balancing act that we have now. Our government will continue to support you and emerge from this together to rebuild and focus our efforts on our future. Um, so once again, thank you uh, today for, um, for tuning in, and I'll pass it over to my um, colleague. Thank you very much, Frange. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, everybody, for joining us here today for this economic update here on the traditional territories of the Kwan First Nation and the Ton Quachin Council. The social, the social and economic impacts of this pandemic are very real and continue to be felt as we move into the first phase of Canada's recovery from this disease. 
In the early days of the pandemic, our government tabled a surplus budget that supports Yukon families, businesses, and communities. It makes business more affordable by cutting the small business tax rate to zero, which will save Yukon businesses $2 million a year this year alone. It also expanded the business investment tax credit to encourage additional investment in Yukon businesses like Air North. And we know how hard the aviation industry has been hit here in the north, across the country, and around the world. This year's budget includes roughly $370 million in capital spending spending to support infrastructure, housing, and education, health across the territory. This money will keep our economy moving forward and keep Yukoners working through this pandemic. In other words, the passage of the 2020-21 budget was good news for Yukon. Today I'm announcing we've issued 80 tenders totaling more than $152 million. That is almost double the value we tendered at the same time last year. We are fixing bridges. We are laying BST and making our roads safer. We are erecting buildings and improving parks. We are making it easier and more convenient to access government services. We are taking this time of decreased air travel to improve Yukon airports, making them safer and more pleasant to visit once we resume traveling. Some of the scheduled projects include retrofitting the old Territorial Administration Building in Dawson to support the Dawson City Museum, a new skateboard park in Whitehorse to serve an increasing variety of user groups, upgrades to the North Klondike Highway to improve that critical transportation link. Community infrastructure projects are being built in Dawson, in Faro, in Pelly Crossing, Mayo, and Teslin. We're doing safety upgrades to the Alaska Highway and Whitehorse to reduce speeds and improve safety for all users. And we're starting the construction of the CarMax Bypass, which is the first of our gateway projects. Our government will ensure businesses, contractors, and suppliers are supported as we deal with the impacts of COVID-19 in the territory. Construction is an essential service here in the Yukon and was never shut down as it was in other parts of the country. This week, we released guidelines for construction sites. Now, some construction industry employers want to know how the prohibition against gatherings of more than 10 people affects them. It doesn't. I want to be clear. The 10-person limit on gatherings does not apply to work sites. Employees must still, of course, reduce in-person meetings and practice physical distancing and wash their hands. It's recommended that companies have, have uh, site meetings in open spaces or outside if possible. They must also ensure proper hygiene and uh, sanitation throughout the worksite and continue to meet health and safety requirements that have always been in place. The guidelines are available on yukon.ca or you can call our new 1-800 number for guidance. Our government continues to get tenders out the door so businesses can retain staff, support their families and keep Yukon's economy on track. Our goal is to maximize local benefits of government spending. Over the last few years, we have supported Yukon companies by increasing the use of value-driven and invitational tenders. Our government awarded approximately 80% of all government service and construction contracts to local firms over the last three years. We are on track to maximize the use of our 10 regional economic development exceptions with the majority being tendered by early summer. These are the $1 million contracts that are restricted to local companies. This tool allows us to invite only Yukon businesses to compete on projects with, up, uh, of, with a value of up to a million dollars. Currently, we plan to tender nine of these contracts by early summer. One has already been let, four are coming in May, and the remaining four will be out by the end of June. They include vegetation control jobs, building maintenance projects, landscaping, and consulting services. Three are taking place along highways in northern and southern Yukon, one is in Carcross, and the remaining five are being handled in Whitehorse. We have also worked hard to increase the number of construction contracts to local firms. We are now putting that same focus on improving contract awards to local uh, on improving contract award to local goods procurement, so local goods supplying company can expect to see more value-driven tenders being phased in over the next year and beyond. We are also keeping local suppliers in mind when we are outlying project specifications. In the past, for example, Northern Windows was prevented from supplying windows on contracts. New specifications ensure locally manufactured projects such as windows can be used in our projects. 
We've been working very diligently and hard to improve our procurement practices since we took office, and we're, being, we're certainly well into seeing the benefits of that work. So the last thing I'd like to focus on this afternoon is the new e-procurement system that will replace the current tender management system. It will allow businesses to submit bids online and will flag compliance issues for bidders, which should help prevent disqualification due to errors or missing information. We are expediting the launch of this online system because of COVID-19. The new platform will increase bidders' ability to compete on all government of Yukon tenders. We will begin using the new system this summer. There are many benefits to this new platform. It will improve and ease our ability to analyze government spending. It will allow us to buy smarter, save money, and focus our efforts on to maximize Yukon economic uh, benefits to Yukoners. As well, it, was, it will include a vendor performance review program similar to the federal government system, being able to score suppliers who work with Yukon government and then later use that scoring information in future tenders will benefit both citizens and Yukon businesses delivering great work on government contracts. From engaging with businesses and supporting them through, our, through these rough waters to maximizing value in spending and, and local spending, our government is working hard to support Yukoners, their businesses, and our economy as we transition to recovery in the time of COVID-19. Before I end, I'd like to join my colleague, Minister Pillay, in reminding people there's no hiding from this global scourge. Every nation, every province, every town, every business, and every person is affected in some way. Some people are, having, are at home with their children. Uh, they can't find daycare. Other people are, are, can't see their children. Um, businesses, of course, are affected every single day as they see uh, customers not coming in or um, limiting their time in their stores. The cost of actually dealing with this pandemic and social distancing and everything else has incurred a cost for Yukon businesses. And we're supporting them every way we can. It's important to remind ourselves, though, that this is in no way over. This virus, which has been among us just six months, is an indiscriminate killer. It does not ask permission or forgiveness. It is sneaky and it is now pervasive. Yesterday, about 120 people in this country died. In total, we've lost more than 6,000. The threat remains, and we've adapted our lives and successfully blunted its appearance and threat in the Yukon over the past two months, but we must not let our guard down. The sacrifices taken by every Yukoner, and they are significant, have saved dozens of lives here. So keep your distance, wash your hands, limit social interactions, and stay at home if you're sick. These measures have saved lives, the lives of our family, the lives of our friends, the lives of our neighbors and they will continue to do so until we create a successful vaccine. So until that happens, we must continue to adapt, keep our distance, wash our hands regularly, and carry on. This government, my colleague Minister Pillay, and the entire Yukon Cabinet and caucus are working every day to make sure that we support our businesses and our Yukoners and keep them healthy. So thank you very much for the sacrifices you've made, and I hope to, uh, I'll take your questions now. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ministers uh, Pillay and Mostyn. Uh, we'll now go to the phone line uh, for any uh, French reporters on the line. Uh, we do have translation available uh, from uh, Julie Menard uh, with the government of Yukon. So feel free to ask your questions in French if you'd like. Uh, we'll start with John from CKRW. Uh, no questions, thank you. Okay, moving on to Claudiane, Radio Canada. Yeah, okay. Um, so businesses are, are you know, um, saying they want nothing else but to just open and start business again. There's a fair amount of confusion out there about different phases and uh, the guidelines not being issued and how long it will take. So how do you, what do you tell businesses that are um, a little upset or unhappy right now with the fact that this we have no cases in the territory, yet they still have to wait before they can start business as it used to be, or they don't even know when that's going to happen? What do you tell them? Um, well, thank you for the question. I think, uh, first, it's important, um, if you're looking for clarity on a particular issue on reopening, um, to to use the um, 
the systems that are in place right now. So whether it's going in and um, getting the contact information and, and calling, uh, looking up on yukon.ca and reaching out to um, the response team is, is really important. And um, if there's any clarity that's needed uh, on a particular um, issue. I think that, uh, um, you know, we had announcements on Friday uh, and it fairly, you know, what I what I think was uh, very clearly demonstrated was the request for people to go on to yukon.ca to um, download or print off um, uh, the uh, blueprint that's there for a, um, a plan for your business. I think it's a good exercise. Um, these are things that businesses um, go through um, similar activities, whether it be their occupational health and safety plans. Um, when you're, you know, from, from my experience of running businesses, whether it's understanding, uh, you know, what you're doing with your staff, how you're looking after your business, what your protocols are, um, they, they, they at times can be tedious, but those are really important aspects of running a business. So those, that's the first step. The second step is um, when we talk about, um, say, restaurants, uh, we know there's guidance um, that's coming um, this week, uh, we believe, and that's, um, you know, that's going to be key. So it's then taking your, um, your template and cross-referencing it against that. Um, you know, I ask, I think, first and foremost is for people to, to have some patience. Um, this is a new um, process that's in place where you're reopening an economy. Um, you know, our, uh, our teams are, are committed to making sure that those uh, operational plans are reviewed and, um, and approved or commented on um, in, in a very quick stead. So I think that that's one thing that um, will be very helpful. Um, you know, when it comes to many of our sectors, again, uh, to, your, to your question, so many of the sectors are, are open already, um, you know, whether it's construction or mineral exploration or it's mining, um, you name it, um, and many did not close. So I think the biggest thing is to, to reach out and, um, you know, I think that you're, you're, you're going to have, when you're going through this much uh, of a tumultuous time with a pandemic and a, an economy uh, slowing and reopening, I, I think, you know, we're, you're going to have individuals who, um, there's some frustration. This is, this is a big change. And um, that's a significant emotion that comes with what's going on. And it also has to do with the fact that people have very significant anxiety for real reasons. Um, our business community is under a tremendous amount of pressure and people um, are in, in a tough spot. So what we need to do if you're not running a business is to get out there and support our businesses and be sympathetic to what they're going through. Um, this is, um, people have built businesses um, in some cases for generations and they're trying to hold on to um, what they've built and what they provide to Yukoners. And so, um, but if it's people that need clarity and help, um, please reach out to us and, um, and we'll step up to, um, to support you and help you through that process. Thank you, Claudianne. Do you have a follow-up question? Yes. So, uh, Premier said um, last time that we're looking at 27 million so far. Now there's been potentially 1.4 million here in the help parents. How much do you think this announcement today, the extension of the help to businesses, will cost? And how much does that break the anticipated deficit? Uh, total deficit for the territory. So there was a four million surplus in the budget. We're looking at what twenty five, twenty seven million now in potential deficit. Yeah, I, I on this particular program, uh, we're looking at approximately um, you know about another um, about another two million dollars um, that we're extending um, onto the program. Uh, and that's definitely something that we have to um, shoulder within our financial framework. But I, I think I think I'd be getting ahead of myself um, to speak on the total financial picture of the Yukon government. Um, you know, in some places we are um, going to see these additional costs, um, and um, and then at the same time we're we're seeing other restraint um, because of the um, lack of activity in certain departments. But I think um, the most important thing is. Uh, as you've heard the Premier say over and over again, um, you know, this definitely will lead to a, um, a supplemental uh, budget and there will be lots of opportunity for um, vigorous debate. I know that I'm watching uh, my colleagues and the Premier in our deliberation around spending and I'm um, and, and very proud of the way that we have um, handled this and my colleagues have handled it and watching the Premier handle it as, as we've always been very um, mindful and, and, and many of us uh, quite uh, 
uh, drawn to being fiscal conservatives on how we handle money. So with that being said, I'll leave the bigger numbers to the end, but quite pleased on how we've um, handled finances through this. Hi, Claudia, and I'm going to weigh in on this on your first question, actually. Um, you mentioned um, with no cases in the territory, people are getting, uh, for lack of a better word, antsy and um, wondering why the why these uh, um, measures we've taken are still in place. Um, we cannot let our guard down here. It's very important as we move into this recovery phase that we do so in a measured and thoughtful manner. Um, this virus that we're fighting globally is, uh, it is uh, debilitating and deadly. And the fact that we have no cases in the territory is something we should celebrate. It has come at a hard cost. Yukoners have sacrificed an awful lot. Uh, we have closed our daycares, our schools, our businesses have been forced to close. We've, it's exacted a heavy toll on our territory, on our country, and the, and the nations of the world. We're not alone in this battle. This is something that the entire, uh, all of humanity is fighting right now. But we're in a place where we are right now because of the measures that we've taken. We're not being judged by what happens, but by what doesn't happen. And these measures, these sacrifices that Yukoners have made are uh, not selfless. They have kept dozens of people, of Yukoners, the Yukoners you know alive, and we cannot, you're talking to people today that are still with us because of the measures we've taken, and we cannot lose sight of that. So I, I don't want uh, people to say that what we're doing is useless. It's not. It's keeping people we know alive, and we can't lose focus of that. Thank you. We'll now move to uh, Gord with the Yukon News. With many still uh, possibly having to work from home, is there going to be any, uh, I guess, pressure put on Northwest Bill to continue uh, with uh, help with overages? Thanks, Gord. Uh, you know what, I, th I think as we... Um go through this process, there'll be continued conversations with Northwest Tell, both uh, uh, myself through the Department of Economic Development, and I know that Mr. Mostyn um, has, we've been in constant dialogue and, and um, you know, appreciate um, uh, Curtis Shaw and his team uh, being um, uh, available and making um, the changes that they can make to, um, to support Yukoners. Um, as many may remember um, Minister Mostyn and I as well, uh, wor working with Northwest Hill, had submitted a request um, last fall, um, which we had hoped would have decisions and would be well on our way. And it, it was really about um, a strategy to look at um, opening up um, some of the um, caps that existed, but also to look at um, a connectivity strategy, um, which we're still focused on. And it was to make the Yukon the most connected province or territory in the country. And we were working through funding that was available um, through um, uh, CRTC to do that. And so now, what we're we're still waiting for decisions to be made on that submission. Um, and that again, the reason I bring that up is it, it will uh, and can affect um, the cost that Yukoners um, pay for their packages. So we're waiting to hear. We've I know Northwest Tell has um, has been. Uh, has reached out. We're also looking to deal with our counterparts in Ottawa, uh, Minister Monsef, who now has come out in the last couple of weeks talking about a continued expenditure. So um, the, the simple answer is yes, we're going to continue to look to have supports for Yukoners. Um, there's been a lot of discussion as well, Gord, about the um, DSL connectivity and the capacity of DSL. So um, I know that Northwest Tell has been in discussion with many in the communities around this topic, and and they're trying to be able to, they're trying to be able to sustain that service, and understanding um, that it doesn't have it's not as robust as our fiber, um, and therefore um, trying to keep it running, but yeah, trying to make it cost effective. Um, so these are all ongoing conversations, and as we see. Um, some of these extra pressures put on households. I know that my my colleague and I will be working with uh, with Curtis and their team um, to uh, to ensure we have the right supports in place. Yeah, I'll weigh on this just a little bit as well. Um, my colleague is absolutely correct. Um, we are working to make the Yukon uh, with Northwest Health to make the Yukon one of the most connected places in Canada, and that's a very exciting project uh, that we um, 
support vigorously. Um, Northwest Tunnel is a private company and they will make decisions on uh, with the CRTC on what supports they can provide to Yukoners in this extraordinary time. Uh, my colleague right uh, next to me here has worked uh, incredibly hard to make sure that Yukoners uh, and the Yukoner, Yukon businesses have supports that they can afford to continue to uh, uh, live and, and um, by uh, pay their rent, buy their groceries, and continue to live uh, while we are in the grips of this uh, pandemic. Um, that work is going to continue. We will continue to provide supports. As well. My, the Minister of Education has recently uh, announced supports for families who are having to pay for more um, uh, expenses in this time, and that would include bandwidth. So we are putting the supports in ourselves through the government to support Yukoners, and Northwest Tel, I'm sure, will be looking to uh, uh, do what it can to help Yukon as it has in the last couple of months. Thanks, Gord. Do you have a follow-up? Uh, no further questions. Okay. We'll move on to uh, Jane with CBC. Hi. With the uh, construction season still uh, going ahead and the, the guidelines out now for construction sites, um, I know construction companies can have a hard time filling positions just uh, within the, the workforce here in the territory. Have you heard if they're starting to look outside the territory to uh, find people on the construction sites or uh, given physical distancing going ahead with smaller crews? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question, Jane, and I really thank you for asking it. Um, the effects of COVID are having profound impacts on our um, on all sorts of industries uh, in the uh, supply chains of goods and services to the territory and in labor um, anybody coming into the territory from outside has to undergo a 14-day quarantine as you know so that does uh, inhibit our the importation of labor to the territory um, so it actually does so I we, we uh, Minister Pillay and I were in a call with unions just yesterday um, and uh, uh, it was a great conversation we had for a couple of hours, actually. And um, what we're we're hearing is that um, right now the uh, this quarant this um, pandemic is actually uh, giving an, uh, some sort of advantage to locals who uh, who can um, immediately start to work on on work sites. The question is: is do we have enough skilled workers to do that? And we're um, I'm sure that the construction company and the construction industry in the territory are looking to snatch up as many low. Uh, um, um, sturdy and competent and skilled Yukon employees as they possibly can. So it's giving our local workforce an advantage and um, that's something that uh, uh, we really shouldn't um, uh, uh, take for granted. We should really exploit that as much as we can. Yeah, but also just to, to add, I think it's important to to share on this on this particular topic um, that we've we've been reaching out to specific sectors um, on the topic and um, really focusing on the fact that we need to um, look um, look look hard within our own uh, community to to look for people that can fill these positions um, you know many of these sectors have been quite robust over the last number of years um, we were in a in a tough time I mean going into um, you know, the month before uh, the announcement on COVID, um, again, we saw a record low in, in, in unemployment. Um, and of course, that's not going to be the, the case now. We'll see sort of more accurate numbers as we get into um, to June with our rolling average. But um, it, it is a time for people to look and to, to maybe um, look hard in our communities, go work with the Whitehorse Chamber and you win, um, go to the Yukon Chamber of Mines and, and source individuals. We But, but to to answer your question, it is also, there's challenges where in some cases we have highly um, experienced individuals that work in particular um, areas of expertise and and we have to continue to um, come up with strategies uh, to ensure that those individuals um, are part of our economy and that are, are working with us. And, and that's the work that we're uh, very focused on at this point. But, um, but please, um, look to the Yukon first for any companies that are out there. Um, and and um, and reach out to us if you need help in doing that. I think it's really important not just to shop and buy local, but let's employ Yukoners first. Um, I'll pass it back to you. 
Thanks, Jane. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, my follow-up is about the fiber optic project with um, Northwest Tel. Is that delayed at all by uh, our current situation? Is that um, kind of put to the back burner? What's the status of that project? No, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, the fiber project's well in hand and proceeding uh, this summer. It's in. Uh, we have every uh, expectation it'll continue, and um, uh, right through the summer and and uh, be completed within the next uh, two years. So this summer and next summer. So it's going very well. Okay. Uh, next is Gabrielle with the White Horse Star. Hi, I'm wondering what is your recommendation um, in regard to the funding extension for businesses that have been mandated to close and know they'll be allowed to reopen soon, but at this point have no idea when? How should business owners go about evaluating how much help they're going to need when everything feels a little bit up in the air right now? I, I think for um, companies that have used um, this particular program to date, um, I think it's important for those particular companies to um, to ensure that they reach out to our department and to look to see where we can uh, um, support them and I and I and I would say that you know if they've if their primary contacts have been with um, uh, Canor um, I think that um, you know you'd probably have some of the same things said I know in our dialogue with between both organizations um, we want to try to help we want people to get back we want to get them back to work we want their businesses open um, but at the same time, uh, we want to make sure that we can use these programs to their best of their ability and, um, and, and with as much flex as possible to support people as they, um, as they get on their feet. I mean, our, our goal, uh, uh, within, um, Gov and, and Gov, uh, sort of broadly, but also, you know, um, spending a lot of time with, with, um, my colleague, Mr. Mostyn, as well as, um, Mr. Dendy's. And uh, we are very close to so many different elements of the economy. We are, you know, have a laser focus on ensuring that we um, get us back to where we were and we do it in a way that is healthy and um, we do it um, with um, a fact-based approach and with strategies um, that work. And so within this understanding that, um, you know, I think as you touched upon, Gabrielle, you said, you know, with so much in the air, what we know now is most businesses um, have a, a pathway in front of them. They have a little bit of work to do on their side. We're going to continue to do the work that we have around operational plans. Um, this is new for everybody. Um, you know, I think that people, we ask um, for a bit more patience. And then once they're open, let's make sure that UConners get out and support those businesses. So I would say, please continue to engage with us and, and let us work through those questions with you. Thanks, Gabrielle. Do you have another uh, follow-up question? Yeah, I'm wondering about also the other side of that. So as you mentioned, there's a lot of retailers that are open, but will likely see decreased traffic and sales due to tourism essentially not happening. Is this funding also geared towards that? And, and would that maybe require another extension farther into the summer? You know, I think that we... That we um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't contemplate the decisions of August, September. Now, um, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, it's sort of a hypothetical. But what I what I would say is we're going to going to continue to monitor. This is new for for many. Uh, so, you know, we're happy to see that those businesses are open. We have identified um, a threshold that we've used as a um, as a decrease in activity of economic activity um, in order to ensure that people qualified. Um, you know, we we are working. Um, Mr. Dendy's is is um, um, hand in hand on this one with me looking at our tourism sector. Um, you know, I I think that's because th we have this um, restriction on travel across across the globe, and so you're right. I mean, there's people that normally would be here, uh, Europeans or Americans that would be purchasing items and things, and um, we don't see them at the, right now. And then, of course, we're looking at what's happening on our Canadian um, travel. So, you know, we know. Um, there is going to be an impact. And what we're trying to ensure is that people can um, manage through this year and, um, and sustain themselves. And so, again, we'll, I, don't, I don't believe there'll be any point in 2020 or going into 2021 where we um, take our hand off um, 
uh, off monitoring or take our uh, stop monitoring um, what's happening in each and every sector. And um, and thankfully, Yukoners are very comfortable um, with sharing their um, perspective and experience and, and feelings about every one of these things with us. And so that dialogue um, will be active and ongoing. Thanks. Uh, next is uh, Paul with CBC. Paul, are you there? If not, I'm sorry. Oh. Question. Sorry, I have no question. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Uh, does anyone else on the line have any questions? If not, then that brings us to the end of uh, today's update. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, information about the extension uh, to the business relief program is available on yukon.ca along with the construction site guidelines referred to earlier and all of the latest updates on COVID-19 in Yukon. Thanks.